Hi, Lindsay here with a quick guide to interacting with our courses on the Grok platform. Uh, to start with, the easiest way to find our courses is to scroll down a little bit until you can see the filter menu on the left hand side and then click Australian Computing Academy and you'll see all of our beautiful bright yellow courses pop up. We can filter even more um, by using a few more options on the left hand side. So for example, I would like to find a course that is in the language Blockly, and I would like to learn more about the BBC Microbit, which leaves us with these six courses. The course I'm going to demonstrate with today is the DT Challenge Sport Plus Microbit course. If you click through, you can have an overview just at the bottom with the modules, the different problems and the slides. You'll have um, begin course here. I have continue course because I've been here once or twice before. So if I click this, it'll take me through to the course. So um, from the landing page here, as a verified teacher, you'll have access to the teacher's notes tab. It's just this one here. Click there for a little bit more information about the curriculum links you'll find in the course. And then throughout the course, as we teach different concepts, the teacher's notes will give you a little bit more insight onto, into what's being taught on the slide for the kids. Um, if we expand this on the left hand side, we can see all of the different slides and questions uh, throughout this course cut into different modules, for example, module two, which covers loops, buttons and music. Um, so you'll notice as well that if it's an, a slide with information, it is a circle. And if it is a question that the students can complete, it is a keyboard and a diamond. So if I go into, for example, um, team colors as a question. This is what a typical question slide looks like. You have the question on the left hand side. And again, you've got your teacher's notes here with a bit more information as well as a sample solution for you to try. Then on the right hand side, you have the workspace. The top, I'd say two thirds of it is for the students to work in. And the bottom is for um, submissions. They can look at the Python code from the blocks as well as the microbit simulator um, if they are running microbit code. So uh, let's just work through a couple of questions, um, a couple of points in this question. Uh, the first one says click on microbit and drag the show block into the workspace. So we can click on this draw to see these extra blocks or we'll drag show into the workspace and that sets off our correct tick. This is available for courses for younger students to help them stay engaged. Uh, and there's a little celebration when you get them all ticked off, which you'll probably see in a minute. Uh, so the next step we need to do is to join the blocks together. So I'll click and hold and drag this over to this block and you'll see that the pieces highlight when they're going to connect. It's probably easier to see when I go the other way around, you can see where the piece is going. So you don't need to go entirely there and just drop and they'll snap in place. And that's our number two tick clicked off. The next thing we need to do is change the animals block to other. So we're going to click here, scroll down and then click other. And that's our next tip. Number four, choose the t-shirt. So we're going to click here, scroll all the way down and find our t-shirt. Click that. There's our tick. Now at this point, it's a good idea to save our work. So we'll head to the top right where we can see save and just click that. One of the things that that does is bring up our submissions panel down the bottom where we can see our previous saves. So if I accidentally drag my blocks and delete them, I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to click on submissions and I'm going to load my submission from a few minutes ago. What we can also do here is download our code. If I click this, you'll see the hex file pop up down the bottom. And that is how you're going to get your file uh, from this workspace and onto your micro -it. Um, the other thing we want to do is test. So um, step five is to run and mark our program. So if I head over here and I click run, we'll see the simulator pop up under here showing the t-shirt. That looks correct. And then we're going to click mark and the marker will automatically mark our code. Now before I mark correctly, I'd like to show you what happens if I do it incorrectly. So if instead of showing a t-shirt, like I'm supposed to, I submit code showing a Pac-Man and then run it to check what it does and then click mark. And then I am sure, so I'm gonna submit. It's gonna say, not quite, your submission failed a test. So 
What the Grok platform does is runs a number of tests on the code to see if it has been built or written correctly. If it fails the test, it'll tell you what the test is. So this one, for example, testing the, the display is showing a t-shirt. It's telling me what it's looking for. And then it will say display was showing a Pac-Man. So it'll show me what it was getting and what it was expecting. So I can say, okay, I need to change this to a t-shirt. Uh, you'll notice I can't click mark. So this is to stop students from changing one thing and marking, change it, mark it, change it, mark it. They have to run their code to see what it does before they can mark it a second time or a third time or so on. If I click submit, and hooray, we've passed all the tests. Great, and we've got one point, wonderful. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for an introduction to the platform. The only other thing is um, if we scroll down here to a slightly more complicated question that has more blocks to work with, there we are. So we have here um, some extra bits and pieces throughout. And when things start to get a little bit complicated, sometimes students can lose a block or they don't quite know where a block's gone. Um, you can reset your workspace. So just head up here and click this little arrow and you can hit reset, reset. And that'll take you back to the original version before anything got complicated, before you started filling anything in. Uh, and you do also have your submissions down here, don't forget. But if you would like to reset or they've accidentally deleted all the code and it's going to take far too long to bring it all back, just hit reset, reset, and there we go. Okay, good luck.